I want to touch just a little bit on, on data visualization, uh, some of the challenges and, and problems. Um, and maybe we can get more into discussion. Uh, I'll just touch briefly on the question of, of what maybe an increase in, in data and sort of large scale data analysis touch on visualization. But I'd really like to get more into that in, in the discussion um, as well. So first thing, data visualization. Not with that. Data visualization is an old, uh, an old topic. So uh, even back before this, but uh, in 1854, uh, lots of people in London were dying of an outbreak of cholera. And uh, there were some key competing hypotheses about what was spreading this disease. Was it, uh, was it an airborne disease? And uh, it, it might have been related to uh, how far you, you lived above the Thames River. That was, was one hypothesis. Uh, Jonathan Snow, John Snow, who uh, graphed this data and drew this map, thought it was the water system uh, that was, was responsible. And uh, actually, post making this conclusion, he drew the map sort of post hoc as an explanation, but uh, plotted where, where the deaths from color were occurring, the pumps on the map, and the one on Broad Street, uh, now Broadwick Street in London. You can still go there. Uh, there's a plaque. I think uh, commemorating this, and convinced them they should remove the handle on the pump, and the cholera epidemic uh, shortly thereafter uh, subsided. Uh, interesting, actually, going back to Eric and Ralph, who started this off. His data was uh, was initially collected based on uh, William Farr, who used the same data to support the alternative hypothesis, um, and uh, John Snow plotted it this way, thought about it this way, and, and connected it to the water system. So why visualize data? Often we go through our, our research processes and visualization is sort of the last thing, right? I, I ought to produce a graph or something for that paper. I want to put it on my blog. Well, yeah, maybe I'll, I'll create something uh, to do. But vision is one of our really highly evolved senses. We're highly attuned uh, to detecting differences in, in lengths of bars, in, in change in lines, color variations. And we're actually very good at spotting patterns, um, things that computers are not always uh, as good at. So uh, as a question, look across these, uh, these four series of numbers. Each one have an xy coordinate. If you've seen them before, they're known as Umscombe's quartet. Uh, but can you tell me anything about uh, anything different from, from series one, series two, series three, series four? Any, any ideas? Anything jump out? If you're using your standard statistical package, we might ask some, some standard statistics about these. So it turns out all of these, uh, these series had the exact same mean of 9, exact variance of 11 in, in x. Uh, to two decimal places, they have the same variance in y, or same mean in y and uh, near close variances in, in that variable. Uh, correlations match to three digits. Uh, linear regression uh, out to three digits, uh, two digits in the, the constant, three digits in the uh, in the multiplier, they look pretty similar until we plot them, right? And all of a sudden, you look at these and you go, oh, hold on. You know, that one, may, yeah, OK, broadly linear. There's something polynomial going on there logarithmic. And uh, here we have some outliers in the bottom side, right? And we can clearly see that as soon as the data is plot, plotted, um, something that really is not clear from just looking at tables of numbers. So those were small pieces of data. I, I could put the data entirely on the screen, and even then, connecting some of the patterns is harder than looking at it uh, visually. But there's some cautions in, uh, in looking at data. This is one of the examples um, that I emailed out uh, earlier. And we really have to make sure that we think about our data. Um, and also, a, a general rule is to generally keep things simple uh, is often better. This was a, um, a graphic. I think trying to display the, the change in market value between different investment banks produced by JP Morgan. The problem with this is that they actually used the radius of the circle in every case corresponding to the market value. So the difference between you know, JP Morgan in 2007 to uh, 2009 uh, in market value, it's the radius of the circle you, you actually would have to compare, not the area. So it's very deceptive um, into actually what it looks like. And if you look at the example, um, uh, the example I referred to you actually works through uh, it's a few who's 
uh, whose example found it, and uh, he works through some different representations to, to show this in a more meaningful way. Even if uh, circles are, are used correctly and we think about area, uh, so this was an article from an article in, in the National Public Radio in the U.S. Um, uh, about a week ago, less than a week ago, while I was preparing, just stumbled across it, thought, all right, well, we'll play with this data a little bit. What do you do on your, your average day off? Um, you know, all right, they're, they're arranged. I can see that sleeping's the largest. I can see that looking for other work, et cetera, is the smallest. Exactly how much bigger is sleeping than leisure? Or is, is cooking and uh, cleaning than eating and drinking? How, how much bigger? Are they? What's, what's the proportion approximate? Right. It's really hard. Um, actually for the human eye to, to perceive the difference in area. Um, it's better than, than radius, don't get me wrong. We're, 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 we're tuned to, to sort of see that, but um, oops, so i jump ahead. So, all right, you think these add up to 24 and uh, lots of people want to, to see them as part of a whole and they think, pie chart, wonderful, we love pie charts. No, don't, don't quote that. Um, but uh, if you stop these into your, your standard uh, familiar spreadsheet software, no names being named, and use the defaults, you get something lovely like this 3D plot. Um, which slice is the largest on the 3D plot, by the way, here? Is it, is it the blue one in the back or the red one? Show of hands. Mm -hmm. Who thinks the red one's larger? Who thinks the blue one's larger? Mm -hmm. All right. The same. We're, we got the blue is slightly the larger. You guys are, are good. The problem with the 3D effect here is we're perceiving all the area underneath this slice here, and it makes our, our mind think that the red slice is actually a lot bigger, a lot bigger than it is. So there's the same exact data without, uh, um, without the 3D effect, and we can clearly see actually the blue slice is bigger. This is sleeping, and that was the, the cooking, cleaning, et cetera. Uh, same data set. But again, to compare these is relatively different. So difficult. So depending what your your purpose is in trying to display the data, um, actually looking at lengths of bars is really easy um, for the human eye to to consider. But of course, there's a few things that we have to be aware of. Again, make sure we have a zero mark on the plot, right? Otherwise, we're going to compare the length of bars, but they're not going to be uh, in proportion to one another. Um, Bars in general as well are better than, than say, a dot when you were looking at the, the length um, of them. But just working through a few examples, and we move from you know, what might have been considered quite nice and, and sexy in, uh, in the National Public Radio uh, publication here. Nothing inherently wrong, per se, but um, moving down to something where actually we can clearly see uh, What's the, what's the largest, what's the smallest. We can get a, a quick intuition as to the differences in, in the sizes as well. Um, so large scale data, which we've been talking a lot about today, what does it change um, in, in terms of visualization? L some competing uh, thoughts, I mean, perhaps not a lot. Um, I think one thing that, that large scale analysis can do is it can complicate what a static uh, graph shows. And so we had petitions on the number 10 downing site. First two weeks, days across the bottom, and, and number of signatures per, uh, that they had on each day um, across the left. It's changed in time, so a line graph makes sense. But that's a lot of data to get on a, on a static plot. And it's a bit hard to put too much meaning to that, sure. Maybe some petitions that succeed uh, ultimately get over 500 signatures, which was a, an artificial mark imposed by the government to get an official response. Yeah, they seem to be clustered. Maybe they, they gain relatively quickly. Lots of doubt. There's lots of red marks that never get over 500. But it's a bit difficult to, to get too much detail um, from this. So I think one aspect that um, maybe large scale data is challenging us with is to to move towards some interactivity to be able to, to explore data um, in greater depth. Also to be able to quickly iterate and, and so that visualization, again, isn't the very last step. I've done all my models, I've done everything, and uh, gee, now I'm going to produce that, that chart to go out. But uh, using the visual techniques as well to be able to explore data, 
to look at it uh, geographical distribution on a map to be able uh, to quickly move and, and mash it up with some other data sources normalized by population by um, other factors. Um, I don't want to go over time and I'm already there so there's some interactive examples and I can make these slides um, available uh, later on. There's some commercial packages that, that particularly focus on uh, visual explora exploration of data. And uh, many statistical packages have graphing software, even if it's not going to produce your final ideal graph, you know, still explore what's there and, and try to use these maybe to guide your, um, your thoughts. I'll stop there on, to be on time uh, and just sum up that uh, visualization of data can be really helpful to, to spot patterns, uh, part of the data exploration process, not just this, this end bolt-on. Um, and some general rules of thumb are, are to keep it simple. Think about the data you're trying to, to represent uh, there. So I look forward to discussion. Thank you.